Hi guys, a very good morning. So this video is about choosing a PhD topic. And in fact, uh, this was suggested by you. I had taken out a poll a few days back and asked for suggestions related to topics on which I can make a video on. And this was one of the most suggested topics. And that's why I'm here with this video. Now, you might be interested in knowing some other thing as well. Like for example, how to choose the institute for PhD and how to choose a supervisor. So I made those videos already. You can click the I button somewhere over here and have a look at the videos. I'll also provide you the link down in the description box. Now I have divided this video into sections and you will find the timeline again down in the description box so that you can find the relevant uh, sections that you really want to watch. Because see, there are some students who have an idea or who have done research before and then there are some students who are completely new to research. So for bo both of them, I have some different um, ways to tackle or to find out on what topic they want to do a PhD, right? So accordingly, from the timeline, you can click to the sections or you can jump to the sections that are more relevant to your query. Now, let's say during your master's, you did not have any research experience at all. Okay. And uh, even after your master's, um, you let's say qualified gate and you qualified NetGRF or even if you have not qualified NetGRF, you have qualified gate and you're looking to do a PhD or starting to apply for a PhD. Then there are certain, you know, institutes which ask for your research topic. Now, how does one, you know, choose a research topic without having any experience? So the first thing is, if possible, get some research experience. Now, how can you do that? Let's say you did not have any master's project. You did not do any internship. I would personally advise you that if, for example, you have qualified gate, then you start uh, applying for these GRF positions. And I keep posting about these GRF positions on my YouTube channel, the other YouTube channel that is Reagent Blues. So you do apply for that and get some research experience. I highly, highly recommend that. The reason behind that is, first of all, you will get to know the difference between theoretical, you know, chemistry and the practical chemistry. They both are a totally different ball game. Okay, so you don't want that to happen to you. That you end up doing research and then you realize midway into your PhD that you are not cut out for research. Is, let's assume that you don't want to get a research experience. You directly want to enroll into a PhD. Then how does one choose a topic? See, uh, start reading research articles. Okay, now you might question that most of these research articles are restricted. That's not the case. For example, this journal Chemical Science and RSC Advances, both of them are open access journals and there are many others as well like ACS Omega and Scientific Reports by very good publishers. A more practical way to actually get some idea of what kind of research is being carried out is basically reading articles from these two very popular publishers again that is Royal Society of Chemistry has Chemistry World and American Chemical Society has Chemistry and Engineering News. Now they basically post a lot of um, interesting research in a very simplified manner so if you go ahead and read those research art not research articles but in general they are they are scientific articles i would say and they are freely available you just have to make an account and you can read those articles right that is really really useful for you because they are written down in a more readable format so you'll understand what the scientists have done and from there you can maybe you know get to know or get informed about what is the latest research that is being carried out and then you can try and understand what kind of topics um, you really want to work on. And I would like to support my um, idea of getting some research by giving an example of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. So when someone joins Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, they are not immediately told to pick a supervisor or pick a lab on which they want to work on or pick a research topic. Okay, basically uh, for three, three months, they spend in different laboratories and then they decide on which lab they want to work on or on which topic they want to work on. So you get three months experience in each and every laboratory and you get to work on different fields. So that is a very interesting way to actually understand where your interest lies. Now, let's say you have already figured out your research topic, okay, by these means, or you have done research project before, and from there you have an idea that, okay, th this is the broad topic that I want to pursue a research upon. Now, the thing that you need to focus on is whether your topic is very resource intensive or not, okay? Now, why am I saying that? So, let's say you have to work on artificial photosynthesis. Now, you have read the research on artificial photosynthesis and you know what kind of instruments are required. Say within India, those instruments are not available with any institute or even if it's available, it's only avail available with a couple of institutes. So, of course, you will have some difficulty because if that instrument malfunctions for some reason, your, your research work would stop, right? And then you might not want to join that institute or your choice of supervisor might not be there in that particular institute. So, you have to come up with a topic which is more practical 
okay which is not so much so intensive just for an example like for example i am a medicinal chemist so um uh, we have to choose targets in which we have collaborators okay what i mean by targets is let's say we are working on some particular protein which is involved in some disease okay uh, now if i choose a protein see when we when we design molecules and we synthesize molecules we also need to experimentally check whether they are going and binding to the protein or not okay or whether they are redu reducing the exp uh, expression of that particular protein so to do that we have to collaborate with external collaborators in the field of biology or biological sciences right now if i choose a target for which i do not have any collab collaborators available okay i cannot collaborate nobody is working on that topic so what will i do after synthesizing how will i do the experimental studies that's where the problem comes so you don't have to be over ambitious with the topic i know you want to work on a unique topic and that is fine that is absolutely fine but you have to figure out that whether you have the collaborators or whether you have the resources to actually carry out that particular you know um, work or you are like professor cv raman that if the resources are not available you come up with a new spectroscopy technique altogether okay so either you are that brilliant or else try and choose something which less resources are required next i would advise you to come up with a research topic which is a combination try and do that okay which is a combination of theoretical as well as experimental that means you get hands on experience on both theoretical um, you know uh, softwares or theoretical concepts as well as experimental um, skills why that is required is because in today's world a lot of uh, the job opportunities are given to candidates who are more who have a higher or a broader skill set okay uh, nowadays if you have experience of both experimental and computational or experimental and theoretical you will always have an edge over the others and the second thing is that when you do theoretical plus experimental you have both these fields to actually go forward with right let's say after a while you get bored with experimental and you want to pursue theoretical so you can do that but when you do purely experimental and you want to switch to theoretical that won't be possible so try and come up with a topic which has both the aspects the theoretical and experimental like for example medicinal chemistry has that um then even material chemistry a lot of computational calculations are required in material chemistry also to design you know uh, smart materials like for example if you want to design a hydrophobic material which repels water you can design that first uh, and then you can test out the theory so it it serves a lot of purposes like i said you have a broader skill set you have the option to uh, you know switch to experimental purely or theoretical purely um, after completing your phd and then thirdly you also get to really see how science works because some of you might not believe that you can actually predict things first theoretically and then experimentally do that but once you do that by yourself by your own hands you will realize that how important the theoretical concepts are now some of you might be tempted to choose a hot topic okay hot topic of research uh, this is always the case so like for example in chemistry the hot topic of research a few a couple of years back might have been ch activation in organic chemistry right but you don't have to get influenced by that it might be at a hot topic at that point of time but within a couple of years things fade like for example now the hot topic of research is machine learning in various chemical tools okay this is just coming up it's a hot topic machine learning in drug discovery machine learning in chemistry so this is a uh, hot topic now you don't have to develop your interest based on the hot topic don't get influenced by it okay so these topics come and go but you have to see your interest so see your interest keeping this hot topic out of your mind if you're genuinely interested in that topic you can go ahead but don't choose that topic just because it's a hot topic because right now it might be hot but when you do the phd and by, by the time you complete your phd it might not be that popular and then you would not have those opportunities right now there are a lot of opportunities if you are good at um, you know uh, chemistry as well as if you are good at programming like specifically in python right so there are a lot of opportunities that are available but that's at this point of time by the time you complete your phd in the next 5 years that topic might not be so popular so you don't have to get stranded with that topic because now you don't have interest nor is that nor is it popular so don't go with the topic just because it is popular at the present moment now if you are specifically looking for a phd just because you want a job okay that is your sole aim you don't care about research you don't have anything any interest in research you are just doing a phd because you have no option or maybe later on you want to do a job and you have heard that phd's are more well paid as compared to a masters candidate now if you are doing it for that purpose or your sole aim is to get into the industry later on then um i would advise to go for for uh, topics like organic chemistry and medicinal chemistry because within india there are a lot of opportunities 
for PhDs in those fields because medicinal chemistry, see uh, within India, uh, the field of pharmaceuticals is very well established. You can see that there's a whole genome valley in Hyderabad and then Bangalore also has a lot of um, pharmaceutical companies and pharmaceutical companies always demand organic chemist and medicinal chemist. So if your sole aim is to get a job after PhD, that's all you, you care about, then choose topics accordingly which have more job opportunities. Like I just mentioned, organic chemistry and medicinal chemistry have a lot of job opportunities because in within India, okay, outside I'm not very sure. Uh, even I'm not ex experienced to know what kind of job opportunities are available abroad. But within India, there are a lot of opportunities for organic chemistry and medicinal chemist in the field of uh, synthetic chemistry. And the last thing is if you're like generally not interested in research at all, then you go for a lab, um, whichever interests you the most or which has a well-established supervisor and you go ahead and whatever topic they are working on, you will also learn it. And that's it. You keep doing like a laborer does. They will tell you add this, add that, do this, do that. You keep doing that and you will get some research articles and then you can get a PhD and then you can do whatever you want. So, I mean, in that case, you don't have to really think about choosing a topic. You can just go ahead, join uh, in a well-established lab, which is already publishing papers. And you go ahead and whatever your supervisor advises, you just do whatever they say. You'll also get publications and you'll end up with a PhD. And you might have some very impressive publications, but then, um, yeah, that is that is the last thing that you so yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope this video was helpful in some way. If you have some other doubts, do let me know down in the comment section. Either I'll try to answer your doubts within the comment section or I will try to make up a video if that particular query cannot be addressed by a simple comment. So anyway, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would highly recommend you do subscribe to the channel so that you get notifications frequently about videos that I post. Yeah, that's about it. I'll see you in the next video very soon.